this is a short one uh, on one of the specific parts of GM crops mentioned, which is to do with nematodes. And uh, nematodes are, are worms. They're a type of worm, very small, and they're they're actually a type of roundy worm. Um, so they, they wouldn't quite look like the worms that you maybe think of as earthworms, but um, they're, they're worms nonetheless. And what they do is um, they they feed on uh, the roots of plants. And what the plant has to do in order to sort of repair itself and keep itself going when it's under attack by these, it, it's using up energy to, to repair it, it, its cells rather than using it, its energy to um, make more plant and make more... Um, sugars and so on. Now from the farmer's point of view we want the plant to be spending all its time um, on growing, getting bigger and making more sugars, not spending its time fighting off um, these nematodes. Now one of the um, things you can do is you can spray on it um, herbicide. You can put pesticides on your crop and that will increase the yield. Now yield is what you want to increase, it means how much crop you get basically, so you can put pesticides on it. However, there are all the problems we have with pesticides, um, such as bioaccumulation, which I'll, I'll do another video on bioaccumulation, um, and all, all the chemical problems with it. So if we can avoid um, using it, then perhaps we will. So one approach that's been taken is to add in a gene for something called cystatins. Okay, and these are actually normally present in plants, so in the seeds of plants, the outside seed of a plant um, would contain these things. And what it does is it prevents the nematodes, and the nematodes can't eat through the seed. Um, it makes it too tough for it. So these are normally present, and, and we eat them all the time if you're eating neat, uh, seeds and nuts, so th there's nothing kind of toxic there. What they, they did is they took the gene for uh, making cystatins and they put it into a plasmid. If you're not sure what plasmids are, you need to watch the um, video on genetic modification. And they stuck in, tell you what, let's use pink, why not? They stuck in this gene that made cystatins and they then got the plasmids taken back up by uh, a bacterium, which is actually called, um, rather nice now, agrobacterium and I'm going to underline it remember when you write the name of an organism you either put it in italics if you're typing it or you would underline it to show that it is the name of, the Latin name of an organism they then um, allowed this agrobacterium to infect plants you might think of plant cells you might think that sounds odd but what it was doing is it was putting in this cystatin gene into those plant cells you would then allow this is called culturing you basically get little blobs of plant cells growing. And these new um, blobs of plant cells would all contain this gene. They'd been genetically modified, they'd had a gene added. So that when the plant grew, it produced more of these cystatins and it produced them in its roots. And now its roots were also too difficult for the nematodes to eat. Um, now, although the cystatins are normally present in plants, because it's a genetically modified crop, they still had to do lots and lots of testing on it uh, before you're allowed to do it. Some people worry about um, you know, this idea of genetically modifying things and what will happen if we eat them. Um, but we forget that, of course, we eat genes all the time. Um, if you eat plants, it contains DNA. It's containing all the genes um, that would be in a plant. If you eat meat, you're eating the genes from the animal. You don't think that they're in there, but of course that's, that's what plants and animals are. It's cells and they contain DNA. So... It's not as if every time you eat um, a sprout, you turn green and start growing leaves, or you know, if you have a piece of fish, you don't suddenly start growing scales. That doesn't happen. We don't even think about it. But because um, this process suddenly seems a bit more scientific and a bit more people are unsure about it, people worry about it. Now, it's not to say that there aren't potentially problems of putting genes into things, but perhaps the dangers um, are not the kind of dangers that people might think there are. The dangers tend to come when if you start adding genes in to um, the genome of another organism, sometimes other genes that are normally present start to do things that you wouldn't want them to do. Um, and that's probably where the danger is more that we're going to become sort of poisoned by new DNA.